Greetings, this is Matt Faiello, and I'm back with another Intersight Managed Mode Expert Series video. This time we're talking about the multicast policy, which is one of our domain policies. Now, this policy has a few settings. Um, it will be used when you create a VLAN. You have to have a multicast uh, policy assigned to the VLAN. Um, by and large, most UCS customers out there will probably just use the defaults, which is fine. Um, but I will uh, point out a few things about the policy. Uh, so hope you can learn a few things. All right, so the multicast policy. So uh, what is it in context of UCS? Well, in most cases, UCS is operating in in-host mode on the Ethernet side. Um, so it is layer two uh, throughout the domain. Um, the multicast policy uh, gets created and gets assigned to the VLAN, okay, which gets assigned to your NICs. Um, it allows you to participate uh, in multicast data flows. So an example of that would be uh, like streaming type services, uh, WebEx, live meeting, etc. cetera. Um, that's typically uh, a particular use case that will highly leverage multicast. Um, you know, within the policy, you can enable settings uh, there to uh, compensate if your top of rack or end of row switch is not configured for multicast. You can actually configure settings to allow the FI to uh, fill in for that uh, as far as a courier, um, which is one of the uh, components of multicast. Okay, so uh, as we've discussed, it's a mandatory policy when creating VLAN. So as you create your VLAN, you're gonna see the option to select a multicast policy and you have to do that. Um, so as far as recommendations go, by and large, most UCS customers just keep the default parameters. Um, as far as the individual settings go, IGMP snooping, that's enabled by default because you want uh, uh, the FI to participate with being able to populate multicast groups. So you kind of need that setting turned on. Um, if the upstream top of rack end of row switch is not configured for multicast, then you might consider enabling courier state. So it lets the FI take over that capability, uh, if you would. Uh, in which case, uh, you'd have to provide two uh, IP4 uh, addresses. Uh, one for the courier IP address is one FI and then one for the peer, the, the opposite uh, FI. As far as source IP proxy, that's enabled by default, but there's a couple corner cases where you might disable that. Okay. Um, the To get around a couple issues we've had in the past with uh, multicast, um, the FI uh, the FI substitutes all zeros in for the source IP proxy. So if you have a firewall upstream or a switch that will not accept all zeros, that's a corner case where you might turn that source IP proxy off. Also, um, to get around some ACI issues, uh, uh, we've we've uh, used that that all zeros for source IP proxy. Uh, the second kind of use case is if you're using IGMP v3, okay? And if the upstream switch is configured for exclusive host tracking, okay, then you're going to disable source IP proxy uh, in the multicast policy. So hopefully that will, that will help you. Um, but again, for the vast majority of customers out there, uh, we anticipate you keeping the defaults. That's why the defaults are set as such. Now, uh, as far as uh, verification, uh, I've put in a couple uh, command strings here. So this is assuming that you're connected to the FI secure shell in, and uh, you've already connected to NXOS. Um, you can do a show IP IGMP snooping on a given VLAN. Uh, so substitute in your uh, appropriate VLAN. And then for groups, you can do show IP IGMP snooping groups than that VLAN. Now, with uh, all uh, IMM Expert Series videos, I'd like to throw in a slide that visually, graphically depicts where this policy uh, is used. So within the domain profile, you're building your, your VLAN policy. 
um, and you can build that individually um, uh, for the domain profile or fabric specific, uh, your choice. Uh, you're going to go ahead and add a VLAN and you'll see that when you add a VLAN, uh, you have to select a multicast policy. Okay, so let's do a uh, short demo of creating the policy. So here I am in Intersight, and I'm in Infrastructure Service. We go down to Policies, and we're going to create a policy. And I like to use the filter here. So I'm a domain. Uh, I'm creating a domain policy, so I click UCS Domain. And then I click on Multicast Policy and click Start and give it a friendly name click next okay already using that so let's go ahead and make it unique okay so here's our parameters and these are the defaults and again uh, we're going to go ahead and keep these defaults um, but uh, refer back to uh, the slides on changing these um, but again, we, we feel that the majority of UCS customers will just keep these default settings. Click Create. And that concludes the demo. All right, so that concludes our video today uh, about multicast policy. Um, hope you were able to learn something about that. And uh, stay tuned for more InterSight Managed Mode Expert Series videos. And thanks.